Time to upgrade your adventure with an RV from Motorsportsland. Don't put off making exciting memories and exploring the many outdoor hideaways right here in Utah. Come in today and see how Motorsportsland can help you get away or visit motorsportsland.com. Trying to quit smoking? You don't have to quit alone. Way to Quit is here if you need help, have questions, or just need to talk. Tips, resources, and coaches are just a phone call away. Call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. That's 1-800-QUIT-NOW or visit waytoquit.org. We're continuing to monitor uh, the governor's news conference. We have some major breaking news right now out of New York. The New York Attorney General has just found that Governor Mar- uh, Cuomo... Uh, sexually harassed multiple women over the last uh, several years. These allegations have been surfacing kind of one at a time over the last seven or eight months now, and she called for a full-on investigation, and her findings are sweeping. Dave, I am waiting for the governor to resign and over this. And he said he will not resign. He said that in the past, but that was before the attorney general has looked into this. Uh, We want to jump out to a press conference. Ann Clark uh, is the Cuomo investigation attorney, and she's speaking right now. Although Ms. DeRosa, the special counsel, and certain other advisors knew about the allegations that Charlotte Bennett had made that the special counsel had found credible, no one treated Ms. Boylan's allegations seriously other than as a threat to the governor. Rather than any effort to determine if the governor had engaged in a pattern of sexually harassing behavior, A team of senior staffers, former staffers, and outside confidants with no official title or role mobilized to attack and try to neutralize Ms. Boylan by sharing disparaging information with the press. Within hours of Ms. Boylan's December 13, 2020 tweet alleging sexual harassment, key members of the governor's inner circle had obtained confidential memos, ones that were stamped attorney-client privileged. They were primarily about an interaction between Ms. Boylan and an assistant. They then redacted the names of individuals other than Ms. Boylan and started sending the memos to reporters. There was also a proposed letter or op-ed drafted by the governor that went through several drafts. The letter attacked Ms. Boylan for alleged conduct at work, for alleged conduct with men other than the governor, as well as postulating various political conspiracies, including that Ms. Boylan was funded by far-right Republicans and supporters of Donald Trump. Although the letter was never published, it was sent or read to a variety of people outside the executive chamber, either to get their advice or ask them to sign their names to it, and shared ultimately with at least one member of the press. The governor was arguing for the release of that letter. He was finally convinced to abandon it by a number of people who thought the letter was a bad idea, in part because what was in the letter couldn't be substantiated and because they thought that victim shaming would be bad as a strategy. Both federal and state law prohibit an employer from taking any action that would dissuade a reasonable employee or former employee from making or supporting a charge of discrimination. Under that standard, the confidential release of internal records to the press and the dissemination of the letter disparaging Ms. Boylan constituted unlawful retaliation. I will now turn it back to Mr. Kim to say a few words about our findings with respect to the workplace culture within the executive chamber. Thank you, Ms. Clark. As set forth in our report, we find that the culture within the executive chamber contributed to the conditions that allowed the governor's sexually harassing conduct to occur and to persist. The culture also informed the way in which the executive chamber responded to allegations of sexual harassment, as Ms. Clark has described, through violations of their own policies and through unlawful retaliation. Well, what was the culture? Words that witnesses have used repeatedly to describe it include toxic, hostile, abusive. Others use words like fear, intimidation, bullying, vindictive. As one senior staffer stated bluntly, as the sexual harassment allegations became public in March of this year in text exchanges uh, with others 
with another in the executive ch in the administration, I quote, hopefully, when this is all done, people will realize the culture, even outside of the sexual harassment stuff, is not something you can get away with. You can't berate and terrify people 24-7, close quote. It was a culture where you could not say no to the governor. And if you, and if you upset him or, his, him or his senior staff, you would be written off, cast aside, or worse. But at the same time, the witnesses described a culture that normalized and overlooked everyday flirtations, physical in intimacy, and inappropriate comments by the governor. One senior staffer testified that at, uh, at a work event, she sat on the governor's lap. Another staffer said she recalled uh, kissing the governor on the lips. The governor testified that those things may have happened with senior staffers. One complainant described her interactions with the governor by saying they were, quote, strange and uncomfortable. But it was like the twilight zone. The typical rules did not apply. You should just view it as a compliment if the governor finds you aesthetically pleasing enough. Close quote. The coexistence in the executive chamber, the executive chamber's culture of fear and flirtation, intimidation and intimacy, abuse and affection, created a work environment ripe for harassment. As another complainant testified, and I quote, what makes it so hard to describe every single inappropriate incident is the culture of the place. On the one hand... That is a special investigator out of New York for the Attorney General's office there. The Attorney General report stating that New York Governor Andrew Cuomo violated federal and state laws by sexually harassing numerous women and then, Dave, intimidating them, trying to retaliate against them. And their allegations, you just heard a number of them, are sickening. They're disgusting. Uh, and this, I believe, is going to be the beginning of a very long haul for Governor Andrew Cuomo. At least nine accusers, 179 witnesses were uh, questioned about this uh, behavior. Uh, Governor Cuomo uh, accused of, or the, the investigation found that he had grabbed the private parts of an employee, had sexually touched a state trooper, and that the Cuomo office had tried to neutralize the accusers. So it wasn't just that he had acted inappropriately, but that there was this vindictive and intimidation, the words they used, uh, after the fact. Again, a very long legal haul ahead for Governor Andrew Cuomo of New York. Uh, we are going to continue to monitor this developing situation. Uh, the news conference in New York City continues.